Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this channel. Today we are going to start a new series in which we create a 3D Endless Runner for the mobile app stores and we will do it in a quick and dirty manner. If you like you can join me and follow me step by step through the process and we start right now. So with not much further ado let's hop into it. First, we need to create a new Unity project, so I open up Unity Hub and select Projects on the left navigation. We can simply use the Add button to create a new project, but there's also an arrow key on the right side, uh, so that you can choose which version you want to work with. Um, since I have multiple versions installed, I want to use the latest one, so let's go with the latest uh, 2019 version. Next, you can select which project template you want to use. Which fits best for you depends on the project you want to create. I will go with the 3D with Extras project template so that I have the post-processing and all that good candy enabled right at the start. I don't know if that will bother me later on and I will install all kinds of uh, unuseful trash that I won't need, but let's roll with it and I guess we'll find out soon. So now Unity is loading all the required packages and the editor will open soon. That can take some time. See you guys in the editor. So there we go, that's how it looks like when you start the Unity 3D with Extras template project for the very first time. Now I'm gonna create a new scene for myself, I just call it level 1 for the moment. Also let's get rid of some uh, of the project template files we don't need, like the tutorial and stuff, just to have a much more cleaner asset folder. And let's also create an import folder. I personally don't like it that uh, installed assets all get dropped in the main root asset folder, so I create an import folder, move them to there, so that I have a much more cleaner project structure later and don't get confused with all that files and folders. Alright, then let's move to the asset store. You can find it under Window Asset Store. And I go to My Assets. I already bought a few assets for this project and I will now start to import them. I basically bought some low poly model packs a character controller, a tune shader, and I also use some free assets like a comic skybox and so on. I will add links to the description of this video for you guys so that you can find the assets in the asset store if you like to buy them by yourself or you can just go with your own stuff and create your own assets. The code I'm going to show you will function independent of any uh, used models or so on. You can go with what you like. For me it's just I like to get things done fast so I don't have any time to model in Blender since I'm a horrible 3D artist. And I also want to get this project up and running fast. So the importing process takes some time. I will grab myself a coffee and speed this up for you guys. See you soon. Now that the import process is completed, I like to move all the created folders right into my import folder so that we have a much better um, overview over our project. Let's do that right now. It looks like we are finally done. So uh, we need to import another package, but this one isn't from the asset store, it's a Unity package. So let's go to Window, Package Manager. Let's wait for it to load and then let's look for ProGrids, which we will need. I don't see it right here, so I guess we have to go to um, Advanced right here at the top and enable Show Preview Packages. And now let's try again if we can see it. All right, there we go. Now let's install the ProGrids package and let's wait for it to complete. Now we can close our package manager and we are basically done with the setup of this project and we can get start coding. Now what I want to do first is take a look at the prefabs we just imported over the asset store and see which models we can use to start working with. I basically am looking for some kind of a road and maybe a simple character or some buildings. Let's just see what we find here. These ones are looking pretty decent. Um, they are simple, but also really stylish. Now let's have a look at some other ones. We have all kinds of stuff here. Let's take a look at a simple town asset next. Let's go to the buildings. You see we have a lot of different buildings here in uh, many different colors. We can definitely work with that. But now let's find us a road to start with. Maybe we should look in the environments folder. Yeah, we have roads here. Definitely good, definitely good. Um, but 
a little bit short in my opinion. Okay, what do we have here? Um, yeah, what's the difference between these two? Uh, maybe the stripe in the middle of the road might be the difference. Yeah, we basically have all kinds of different stuff. We definitely have many choices and many prefabs to work with. Okay, let's also take a look at the props folder. Um, what do we have here? Oh, the tree is looking pretty stylish. Okay, so then let's take a look at another asset, the um, low poly ultimate pack. I bet they have roads in there. Maybe T? Prefabs? Okay, what animals do we got? Let's look in terrains. Tiles. Ah, okay, there are some roads in there. So, then let's find one which we can work with. You see the models in the previews are pink. Um, usually that's an issue with the materials. And as you can see, there is no material selected. So then let's uh, see if we can find the right material. Not completely sure which one would fit for this. Um, I guess since they have only one material slot, they use Atlas Texture. So let's, let me see if I can find the right material to um, use for these models. Maybe I give this one here a try. Let's see if it works. Huh, not quite. Let me see again. It has to be in there, I just need to find it. So let me take a look again. This could be the right one, so let's try this material. Yeah, seems like that fixed it. All right, so now let's take a look at the prefabs actually. Well, this road looks pretty good. I might just roll with it for now. Let's take a look at the other ones. What do we have here? That are some rails. I like the width of this road much more, but um, the stripes are missing, which are important in my opinion. Okay, so then let's go with this one. It's looking pretty nice. So now we just grab the prefab and drag and drop it into our hierarchy. Next I need to know how big the road is so that we can uh, spawn it automatically uh, using code. So I just um, switch to orthographic view and use the grid to see how big it is. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Okay, it seems to be 30 meters long. So that's the value what we need to consider when we spawn roads automatically um, with our code later on in the spawn manager. But first, let's not worry about that. I duplicate the road one more time to have a nice roadblock for the start to work with and to play around a little bit. Yeah, I guess that's looking pretty good. Alright, now next let's start writing some code. To have a little functionality and at least have a first prototype ready to test and to have something to play around with, I will now write a simple character controller. Very, very basic. It's just some test code, prototyping stuff, so that we can play around a little bit. Later on we will refactor and replace our code. But for now, and to have a playable prototype up and running, it's pretty decent. So, let's get started. First, we create a new game object. I go with a sphere and I will just call it player. Now let's move to our scripts folder and let's create some new scripts. Let's start with one for our player. I call it test character controller. And let's also create one for our camera. I call it test camera controller. And now let's drag our test uh, character controller onto our player and our test camera controller onto our camera. Let's also quickly fix the position of our player so that he doesn't get stuck in the ground. And now let's open up our player controller script in Visual Studio. Like I mentioned, this will be pretty basic, just prototyping, so let's get started. 
So let's create a new public variable. Um, I'll make it a float called movement speed. Um, this will control how fast our player is moving. And let's give it a default value of 10. Let's now move down to our update method. I create another variable called age movement and I set it to input.getAxis. Now we can hand over an axis name, which will be horizontal. And let's multiply that with our movement speed. The same thing we do for our vertical movement, so let's create a new variable called vMovement and set it to input get axis. This time we hand over a vertical. We again multiply with movement speed and this time we divide by 2 since we want the player to strafe not quite as fast as it can move forward. So to actually execute a movement we use transform.translate and we hand over a new vector 3. For the x-coordinate we use our h-movement, for the y-coordinate we use nothing, and for z we use our v-movement. Alright, so that small little script of three lines of code is actually enough to move our player using the arrow or WASD keys. So let's go back to Unity and check out how it works. As you can see, we can move our player, but something went wrong. I can strafe very much faster than I can move uh, front or backwards. So then let's take a look back at our script. Ah, yeah, you see, the division to reduce the movement speed uh, shouldn't go to the vertical movement, but to the horizontal movement, so I changed that very quickly. And now let's test it out again if it works properly. And it seems to work this time. Seems like we have a functional character controller, although a really slim one with not much more functionality but to move, but that will be enough for the moment. We will come back later and refactor our code and make it more functional. Up next, we want to, when we move our player, that the camera is following him, so that we can move around the world. So, let's take a look at our camera controller script we created. Let's open it up in Visual Studio. And let's create a new private variable of the type transform, and I call it player. Next, in our start method, we want to get the instance of the player transform. So we use the static method find, um, where we can search by the name of a game object in our hierarchy. So to do that, please make sure that your player is actually called player. And we get the transform component of the game object. Now in this specific case, we won't use update, but late update. It has a very similar function, but gets called after all updates are processed, so that we know that the player actually has moved and afterwards we will move the camera so then that we don't have any stuttering or something else going on. Now we just move the camera by resetting uh, its position. So just transform.position and we hand over a new vector 3. But we also need something like a camera offset because the camera and the player doesn't share the exactly same position. The camera is a little bit above and behind the player as you remember. So then let's create um, two variables first for the camera offset. I call them y offset and z offset. Um, and in the x axis we don't need an offset. Now let's jump back to Unity and uh, take a look at our camera and let's see which position would be the best behind and above our player. So I just play around with the y and z values a little bit and let's see if we can find a good position for our camera. Okay, let's see. Okay, I think 2 for y and minus 5 for z are perfect values. So now let's get back to Visual Studio and readjust our variables. Now that we have our offsets, we can uh, actually continue to uh, create our vector 3. So let's go back to our late update method. And we hand over the player's x position for our x uh, value. the player's y position plus our offset for the y value and the player's z position plus our z offset for the z value and then we're done. Now let's clean up our code pretty fast and let's check out if our code works. Hmm, not as expected, uh, so let's go back to Visual Studio pretty quick and let's see if we made a mistake somewhere. 
Ah yes, yeah, see, I accidentally used um, a minus there. That should be a plus. And now it should all work, so let's test it again. And it works. So, we have basically a simple prototype for character and camera movement for our endless runner. It's no next-gen stuff, but it's quick and easy and it's functional. To round it up, today we have successfully set up our project, we imported all the assets and packages we need, picked some assets to start with and we wrote some basic scripts for moving around our player and our camera. Coming up in the next episode, we will start coding our spawn manager and we will generate the world in the fashion of an endless runner using code. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash like or hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye.